Uh, today I have the privilege to speak with a stalwart of the esports scene. Uh, Paul Schalliner, also known as Red Eye, has been around esports since pretty much the very beginning. His long career earned him the right to moderate the Valencia Esports Congress, which took place this weekend. And that will be the primary topic of this interview. Uh, the Congress gathered a number of influential people in the industry together to discuss a number of important topics and notably pulled the tournament heads of um, a number of major organizations like IPL, DreamHack, MLG, ESL, and NASL to the same place, um, providing the chance for discussion and future, perhaps future collaboration. But that's enough uh, from me for now, so let's go ahead and give Red Eye the chance to talk. Uh, so how was Valencia, Paul? Uh, warm. Very warm. warm. Yeah, I can yeah, imagine that. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty cold back here in the UK, that's for sure. Yeah, when, when did you get back? Uh, I flew back yesterday. Okay, awesome. All right, so let's uh, do a little bit of a um, intro thing again. But um, it would be a bit absurd to ask you to recap your entire career, obviously, <laughs> in esports, since it's you got about pretty... about 10 hours? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, could you give those who may not know who you are, like, to a like a really big extent, like some idea of what you've done for the community over the years, like your biggest projects, uh, to maybe name a few? Uh, I, uh, I mean... You know, started off as a player, um, played some Unreal Tournament, fell into shoutcasting by mistake, um, did the whole audio-only thing for a couple of years, uh, worked with DJ Wii at ITG, went around the world, did a whole ton of events for a few years, did the CGS, uh, had a couple of years off, came back, did some hosting this weekend. <laughs> All right, awesome. Like the, the abridged version. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you've, you've so you've been involved in like a ton of organizations, and so you've seen a number of different organizations come up and like rise and then fall out of the ground. Some quite tremendously sometimes, but yet like you've well, yet you've come back and you remain a supporter and contributor to esports. Uh, what keeps bringing you back? Um, I don't know, just a general love of games, really, and competition and incredible games and you know, and I don't mean incredible games in terms of you know Starcraft 2 is an incredible game it is a good game but it's you know it's not that it's not the reason it's um it's the matches it's the the events it's the new games that come along and excite you with the way that they play and um you know I never really I don't think I ever really went away I mean I just kept you know coming back and watching stuff and doing stuff in the background but I, um yeah for me it's um just that constant thrill of excitement. It's, it's waiting for those moments that happen that are um, just as unique as any other sport, really. All right. Okay. So, um, how did you feel about the like health and potential of the esports scene uh, coming into this event? And now that it's occurred, uh, has your opinion changed at all uh, on that? Uh, I think we're in a pretty good place right now. I think um, you know. Uh, if you consider that I've, I've probably been in and around esports for about 10 or 12 years, um, I've been fairly lucky to see it go up and then come back down and then go back up and then come back down. So uh, I've said this at the weekend to a, a few people, you know, at the bar after the event that <clears throat> for me, it's 2012 has, has become, you know, a line of sand that is uh, the highest level we've had so far in terms of broadcasting, the streaming, the games, the money, the developers, the tournaments, everything has gone to a whole new level, and that's fantastic. But it's, I don't, I don't necessarily think we've seen the pinnacle yet, and, and I hope we haven't because I think it's got even more potential. Mm -hmm. um, and we're certainly at the top end of things at the moment. But I've got no doubt about it. We'll we'll find a trough in the next couple of years, and then we'll go back up. But I think generally over the last ten years, the line has definitely been on a. Um, you know, on a proper vertical. It's it's not that it's um, it's come back down and it's gone lower than it was before. It's it's then come back up and it's even higher than it was before. So, um, yeah, I think in general, um, I don't think this weekend changed anything for me. I don't think it made me think, uh, you know, well, we're definitely on the up or we're definitely on the down. Mm -hmm. um, it certainly opened my eyes to the fact that a lot of people um, need to talk and, and need to come together a bit and. Uh, the need for regulation and support for players in particular uh, is definitely there and I think there's a willingness now for uh, people having spent the weekend or you know, a couple of days um, to start coming together more often and that's that's a good thing yeah so uh, like it kind of expanding on that like bringing all these people into one place um, you mentioned in your the team look good post which by the way if people have not read uh, his team look good post uh, it's a pretty good um like kind of a quicker recap of like some sort of things that happened and just like the general state Still of the Congress. Long. 
Yeah, no, it's it, like... It, it, like, put 20 minutes aside and grab yourself a coffee or something. <laughs> um, yeah, that was meant to be an AMA, and then I thought, no, I'll write a blog, and then I wrote a blog and thought, Jesus, I could probably could have done an AMA faster. Yeah. Oh, well. But, like, so you, you specifically mentioned that there's a... Um, there's next If there was another event like this, you would very much want there to be player rep- representation. Um, yeah. So what would player representation... Rep- blah, blah. What would player representation bring to the table, and do you have any, like specific players in mind that you think would represent the industry pretty well from that standpoint? Uh, uh, I think players would be great, but I think there are, you know, let's let's roll back a second. The reason I want players, to me, they are the reason that esports exists. I mean, I know the tournaments are important, I know the games are important, I know the developers are important, I know money's important, what have you, but without the players, you've got nothing. You've got no teams, you've got no tournaments, you've got no competition. So for me, as much as we can all talk about esports and be passionate about it and love it, without the players being involved, it's, it's not right. And I know other people have said, well, actually, if you get the players involved, eh, they'll start talking about Zergs overpowered <laughs> and, you know, the counter strike goes, not the same hitboxes as 1.6, oh my god, and yeah, and then that that's quite a naive view actually. I don't think the players would be like that. I'm sure some would, but I think we need to find five or six players and, and there are plenty of them out there who are articulate, who are passionate about their game, who are passionate about esports, who are passionate about the things that they need. Things like, you know, player contracts, teams to stick to them, uh, players to be sent properly via you know, Rhett this weekend didn't make the, the tournament because of some cock up with, with yeah. that should not happen anymore we're doing 2012 for Christ's sake yeah. you know don't screw shit up like that because it's not right and, and they need to you know they need to stand up to teams and they can't because the teams have the power and I don't mind that so much but players need representation they need agents they need um, support they need mm-hmm. uh, PAs they need you know there's so many things that the players need and just the basic things at tournaments like a green room where they can just sit and relax and chill and not get harassed and um, be stressed out and you know I just think there's a lot of things that the players and I don't know all the answers and I don't even know all the questions but I think the players have got a lot of things that they feel as the superstars because that's what they are uh, um, they have a right to have those things in place at tournaments they have a right to have things like contracts and what have you and, and until we get them in front of a panel um, where other people can see what they what they would really like to have, uh, and not doing it in a nasty way, but just explaining what the, some of the simple things they think they should have as part of their uh, careers, then I, how do people know what they want? How, how do tournaments understand? Um, you know, if you have you ever asked a player, or has a tournament ever asked a player, would you prefer us to pay your pay your travel, pay for your nice hotel, pay for someone to pick you up from the airport and bring you to the event? Uh, or would you prefer a higher prize prize money pot? No one's asked the players, mm-hmm. so I think it's it's time to do that. Yeah, definitely. That definitely does make sense. Um, I mean, yeah, the um, there was obviously like everybody, um, not everybody, but like a number of different panelists like discussed like the potential of like different unions for each part of it. Like a players union would definitely yep. be ridiculously helpful in that regard, at least. Um, all right. Um, all right. So kind of going back to like that. So there's. Players unions are one part of it, but uh, most of the panels at some point or another discussed the potential for like an esports federation and what that would mean for the whole scene. Uh, do you personally think that the scene is ready for one right now, or if it's ready in some respects, like for just a players union or just a team or event union, or like what uh, do you think would be best fit right now? You think? I, uh, you know, it was a question I asked in every panel because I think it was relevant. I wanted to try and get as many opinions on it as we could. Mm-hmm. Um, to try and help other people that were maybe not anti but but reluctant to join any federation to kind of understand what the issues were um, and from different views. So I wanted to try and get the developers' thoughts on it. I wanted to try and get the team managers' thoughts on it, tournaments and what have you. Mm-hmm. Um, as for me, I, I, think I think maybe we're not ready for it. Um, having listed all the panels and all the different people speak, um, yeah, I'm not sure we are ready for it. I think we need something. Um, mm-hmm. I, I would like... And what I did like about the Congress was that the tournament, the, the large tournaments, are at least in agreement with you to speak regularly. Yeah. And I think, you know, if we achieved anything over the weekend, we've done that. Uh, and that's that shouldn't be just tossed aside lightly. I think we, we need to appreciate that, that was a that was a big win. Yeah. Um, beyond that, yeah, I think a players union would be helpful right now. And I don't mean because it needs to take power away from the teams or the tournaments or whatever, or hold anyone ransom for that matter. It just it just gives them some security. Um, 
some peace of mind, some standard setting, that kind of stuff. So I think that would be helpful. Mm. Um, the problem we've got is that how do you, how do you start a player union yeah. um, when the majority of the guys are 18, 17, huh. that's, 16? That's, that's, that's a good point, I, mean, I think, yeah. You know, I, I think maybe you start it off with Heaton and White Ra, maybe. You know, <laughs> two old guys from the scene. and uh, maybe, maybe they've got some, you know, I'm not saying that the youngsters haven't got any common sense or intelligence because they have, but it's, you know, they're, they're, they're too busy dealing with the start of their careers and learning about media and going to tournaments and flying all over the world. They don't have time to start a union. Uh, and, and some of them may not even realize that they need one. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it would be, of all of the things that we discussed over there, I think a player union would be good or some sort of association at the very least. Um, because I think it also holds the players accountable as well. I don't think it's just about what we can give to the players, it's about how they should be reacting and acting um, at tournaments, and I think tournaments will welcome that too. Yeah. Um, maybe stop some of the silliness, and I know that you know some of the silly things that happen are kind of oh, it's cool, and you know it goes on Reddit, and everyone laughs, and it's <laughs> good fun. But actually, uh, in a business sense, it doesn't do any favors for the tournament, doesn't do any good for the teams, and it certainly doesn't do any good for the sponsors. So, yeah. you know, it, that that sort of thing. I mean, it needs to stop. It's no different to the footballers going out on the. You know, on the night out and getting drunk and you know, doing stupid stuff, and and they end up in criminal prosecution sometimes yeah. because of it. So mm-hmm. I don't want players in, in esports to do that, yeah. and I especially don't want them to do it now, just as we're on the cusp of becoming, you know, really really big and potentially seeing some really crazy sponsors come in and make this thing go even bigger. Yeah. But in um, terms of federation, no, I think we're probably we're probably too early. But I think okay. the seeds can be sown right now. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um. So yeah, kind of, kind of segueing into that, you mentioned that like so the, the tournament heads are like are now have agreed to talk, and that was um, and that that's a very important thing. And I mean that was like th- these were some of the most power. These were like pretty much the most powerful non-Korean tournament organizations that there are yeah. present here. Um, so now that you've heard these big names talk both on and off stage, just a conversation you've heard of the weekend. How do you feel about? Basically, how do you feel about that going forward, having now heard these people in person and what they've had to say about um, esports and developing it and into the future? Um, I'm, I'm more positive than I was before the weekend. I think what you have to understand is that, you know, and I've said this to all of them, so this isn't a surprise to them, um, they've all got big egos. Um, they all run fantastic tournaments. Uh, they all have self-interest in making a living, making a business, uh, growing, and... Uh, attracting the right sponsors, bringing the best teams and the best players to their tournaments, and you know that, that makes perfect sense. They're all individual businesses, but if we can, and I think we have achieved this, so it's kind of like a retrospective question in a way, um, or retrospective answer, if, if they can at least talk to each other and come to some um, common ideas of things like schedules, for instance, the schedules, mm-hmm. look at November and you just go, wow, how, how do I... I don't even know how I'm going to watch the stuff in November, let alone how the players get to all of those tournaments and how the teams afford to send them the players. I have no idea because yeah. there are just ridiculous amounts of tournaments and they all, some of them overlap. And so, you know, yeah, I mean, I think David Ting was particularly eloquent about that and he was saying, you know, he's planning he's planning season five and six and seven and eight already. And, yeah. well, great. Well, if you've got dates in mind, why not share them with some of the other tournaments? And that seems like a realistic, a realistic thing to do. So, um, yeah, I think they can, they can at least get that done. I think they will get that done. Um, I think what impressed me most was that there was a genuine sense that actually they all suddenly realised, and I don't know if they suddenly realised, they probably already knew, but it confirmed that actually all of them have got the same motivation. They all want esports to succeed, and they kind of realised that, you know, yeah, okay, maybe it would be better for Sundance, for instance, that MLG were the only league in North America, but he, he accepts that there aren't, and he accepts that those other leagues around make him do his job better because he wants to improve his, his league. Mm-hmm. Um, but, it gen- I mean, genuinely, people were talking, and they weren't just talking on the stage. Um, they were talking behind the scenes. They were talking at the dinner. They were talking outside having a smoke. Um, and these conversations were interesting because they, they were genuine. And... I think that's as much as we could have hoped to get out of the of the day. I think it was very difficult to bring that many people to one place in one time and expect us to solve every problem that's in esports right now in in a single day or a single session of ninety minutes. I mean, it's it's just unrealistic. Mm-hmm. This is that. Yeah. Um. Okay. 
Um, were there was there were there a particular couple of panelists? I mean, like some people could probably try and infer the answer to this question just from like kind of your reactions, even though you couldn't actually say anything uh, while moderating. But like, were there any panelists that you specifically found yourself agreeing with their their ideas more often than not when they proposed like newer sort of things to do? Um, I think it was a little bit of everyone. I mean, and that's not a diplomatic answer. <laughs> you know, I genuinely there were some things that made me go. Yeah, okay, that's an interesting thought. I hadn't really thought about it that way. Um, I, I tried to go into this with a very open mind and uh, not assume too much, you know, if, if, if anything at all, because I wanted the talks to be uh, very neutral. Um, I found that very, very difficult. Sometimes I wanted to ask a question for me. Yeah. Um, but actually, maybe it was the wrong place to ask it, or it was inappropriate to that panel, or it wasn't the subject matter that we were discussing. So um, that bit of it was very difficult. Um, I don't think there was anyone in particular, but I think there were just little snippets. You know, David Ting came out with some very, very eloquent comments. Uh, Sundance was very enigmatic, made some great observations about the North American League that I, I just wasn't aware of. Mm -hmm. um, I think we had we had some fun at times, which was nice. <laughs> yeah, uh, there was a, a few moments. I think Matthew Dallon saying "Beyond the Game" was yeah, that was pretty uh, funny. Pretty, pretty funny. Um, no, I don't think there was anyone in particular. I think um, I think every panel just had something out of it, you know, right across the board. And uh, I think the more eloquent speakers were perhaps Alex Garfield from EG, uh, Dustin Browder, obviously, um, and Sundance. But yeah, beyond that, I, I think everyone had something that they brought to the table, and that was uh, was really good. Awesome. Um... Of the, of the five panels, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and exclude the, exclude the last one just because of like the sheer like caliber of people that were involved in it. But um, <laughs> uh, which which panel was most compelling for you of the other four? Would you say? Um, actually, the developer one. I think probably because my knowledge is so poor in that area, and uh, I've not worked with a huge amount of developers. And, and when I have worked with them, um, they've been about you know, delivering a commentary or, or a hosting job or something like that. So I don't really get to know the developers, the real developers I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, you know, sure I've worked with Blizzard and I've, I've worked with you know, other, other big companies as well over the years, but I don't work with the people that make the games necessarily every time. Um, so, yeah, to hear their views on esports, I think was, for me, um, reassuring because it, it really demonstrated to me, and I hope it came across, that actually they were really passionate about esports. They really love it. Um, Dustin, for instance, loves the fact that, you know, okay, yeah, people moan about Zoe being overpowered, but whatever. <laughs> if you ignore that for a second, he loves the fact that the players will go out there and do stuff to his game that not even he thought about. Yeah. And that's, and he gets a kick out of that, and that's cool. Um, hearing what they had to say about, you know, free to play stuff and, um, you know, just listening to Nadio as well, to Florent from Nadio saying, and talking about you know the flexibility within his game and saying how shoot many could be the next FPS and how passionate he was about that and how articulate he was even though it wasn't his home language. Uh, again, really enjoyed that. So yeah, probably not by much, but probably the developer panel was the most interesting for me personally because it taught me a lot more. Yeah. Um, was there a panelist that um you would have liked to see get more involved in the conversations. There were obviously some uh, quieter ones, and some of that was, yeah. I mean, one specifically I know is kind of due to, like, language language differences, and it just kind of seemed a little less eloquent. There's, it's kind of hard to avoid that. But what, is there a panelist you wish had gotten more involved? Uh, I think Matthew Dallon is a very intelligent, clever man. Um, I think he's had his critics, but I think he's, he's very sensitive to what esports um, can do. I would love to have um, tried to bring him into the conversation more, and I tried a couple of times, it just didn't work. Mm -hmm. um, I think Russell, again, um, on the same panel, I would love to have heard what he had to say a bit more. Um, and again, I failed him, he didn't fail the, the panel, it was me failing him and, and letting maybe Sundance and Robert take, uh, take control <laughs> of it too much. Um, I think uh, hearing what the IESF had to say um, in answering the questions would have been really nice uh, and again I tried very hard to try and get that out but it, mm -hmm. it's very difficult I think you have to be very appreciative that um, many of the panelists first language is not English yeah and it, it's sometimes difficult to articulate that so yeah you know, um, yeah it's, it's difficult yeah. Uh, I, there was no I don't think anyone uh, particularly failed um, 
to get involved on the panels. I think everyone did something and, and gave something in terms of their opinion or, or their their thoughts. So that was uh, that was good. But yeah, I think I think probably those uh, were failed by me more than anything else. Okay, yeah, I, I know with the uh, the last panel ones, yeah, getting, getting past Sundance and Robert when they kind of get going is a bit a bit tough. I wouldn't even know how to begin to stop that from just taking taking complete control. Um, all right, I think that's actually all the specific questions I have for uh, VAC, VEC in, in particular. Um, so before we move on from that, uh, are there any specific points you would like to make that you were either unable to in your role as a moderator or that you may not have made in your post-mortem post or just anything else you want to say about that in particular? No, I, I don't think so. I think, I think the, the key thing we, we all missed was the, was the player side of things. Um, mm-hmm. And I think if I have a regret now, it would be you know, not, not including at least maybe a couple of players in some of the panels just to get their perspective. And I think one of the panels that was really good, again, coming back to the developers one, was that having Alex there from Na'Vi gave it, gave it a kind of, gave them a different view. It gave them the professional esports players' view. I mean, that guy's been a legend in Counter-Strike over the years. Uh, and yeah, okay, he runs a team now. But he knows what makes a great game. He knows what makes a great game from an esports point of view. Um, and I think we probably probably should have had a few more um, players involved. But no, other than that, I think, um, I, I, as you said, I wrapped it up on Team Liquid. Um, it's difficult. I, you know, I spent two weeks preparing for this thing, trying to stay massively independent, um, treading on that political line of correctness most yeah. of the time, um, but still trying to answer the, you know, ask the, the tough questions and, and getting answers out of people. Uh, and as I said in my post, I think the guy that got the hardest deal was, was a good friend of mine, which was Stuart Saw, who, mm-hmm. um, you know, to be fair, answered the questions that were put to him really well. So, yeah, job done. Okay, awesome. All right, so just a few um, just kind of extra questions to try and mix it up a bit. Um, so you're not currently full-time in esports. Like, you have, you have a day job, so that's obviously going to take up some time. If you were to hypothetically leave that day job and then like head up a big project in esports what do you think your number one goal of that project would be uh growing esports is a bit too general of an answer if that was going to be your answer but like what specifically would you want to focus on trying to do with an organization in esports if you had the chance to run one wow uh that's just blown my mind um <laughs> i don't know i I've, I've been so focused on Hosting and casting and doing shows and TV and stuff like that that I I don't really I really know I, I really <laughs> don't I've, I've not had a, t- a chance to think about it until you until you ask that question so um, I don't I don't really see myself involved in esports in any other way I, I don't know how I would be um, mm-hmm. I think I could you know, I'm happy to give advice I mean you know over the years I think I've I've thrown stuff in when we were at the CGS and made suggestions, but they're only suggestions from a you know an esports fan. I mean that's all I am. I'm an esports fan that likes video gaming. That I'm lucky enough that people enjoy listening to me or watching me. So um, yeah, I don't really know. <laughs> that's a crazy thing to say. But I don't really know. Um, yeah, I mean I, I I've just had a really enjoyable career in esports doing the commentary stuff and I, I that's all I ever would really want to do is comment out on a great game um, do hosting um, moderate esports conferences again I don't know yeah well yeah that's fair I, I mean so that's like <laughs> not a very capital answer I know but it, I, I don't really know anything else no I can imagine that that'd be hard if it's just kind of like thrown at you you can't really just like answer that like off the top of your head it's kind of hard I can imagine that um I have okay, to admit, so, I'm not usually stuck, so you've, that, that's a win for you. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, that's, where did that question go? Those in my head. Okay, I found it. All right. Um, so, so you mentioned that you were kind of like only just now, like ki- kind of like coming back into things. So you had like you had faded down into the um, just into the fan bit a little bit, but now you're hosting and doing stuff again. But um, a number of other like commentators, especially with this huge swell, uh, StarCraft Two. I'm gonna go ahead and point it out. Just like they caused this huge swell in, in like viewership numbers, I think. But um. And so many more commentators have risen up from uh, not like so the, the non DJ weeds and the non people who have been there. What do you think about the level of casters now and commentators that have just kind of come up now and how they affect the development of the industry? I guess. 
Um, I think it's a good thing. I think we've always, um, you know, back when we and I started, we, we didn't have enough and we were always, you know, desperate for more and mm -hmm. trying to find people and, and dragging people from all over the different places to just get them to come out and do some stuff with us. Um, so I think it's good. I think it's great that StarCraft 2 in particular has a dearth of commentators. There, there were just so many. Um, I think the level at the highest level is better than it was five years ago, which is great. But I think the meme level is probably a lot lower, um, and that comes with more people trying it. But I, yeah. I, I'm not going to stand. I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, you're new to it. You shouldn't. You shouldn't do it, or you shouldn't stream, or, or whatever. Um, I think if you enjoy doing it and you, you want to do it, then do it. Um, if you want to get better at it, though, then, you know, listen to some of the better guys. Go and figure out how they do it. Go and learn stuff at broadcasting school. Go back to college. Uh, go and do a course. Um, Spend some time listening to the radio. Sports radio is fantastic. It was easily the best teacher I ever had back in the day. It was listening to football being commentated on the radio. Mm -hmm. Because those guys have to be so descriptive without using the same words ever again. Um, and if you can't learn from them, then you, you'll never learn. Um, go and watch football on TV. Listen to what the commentators do. Listen to how they flow and interact with each other. Listen to um, you know. Snooker commentators and how they slow things down and make more exciting. Because snooker is a really boring game, by the way, um, and yet somehow the snooker commentators make it interesting. How the hell do they do that? Um, and and learn that dead air isn't a nasty thing, but it can be. And learn how to pace. Learn how to build excitement. Learn how to tell a story. Uh, learn how to interact with the other commentators so you don't talk over each other. There's loads of things that you need to learn. Um, and you know, just go and go and talk to people. Go and talk to Wee. Go and go and bug the crap out of him. He will help you. He helped me. Hmm. Um, nag me on Twitter or you know Reddit or somewhere. I don't care. I'll help if I can. Um, just just don't be afraid of, of asking some decent people for feedback. And don't don't rely on the community to tell you that you're great or that you're bad. Um, I have a very thick skin, so it makes no difference to me whether people like me or, or loathe me. <laughs> um, as long as the people I work for know that I'm doing a good job, then. I'm doing a good job. If my peers, people like Marcus and Tasteless and Day Nine and Total Biscuit and all the rest of them, you know, they think I'm doing a good job, they'll tell me. If they think I'm not doing a good job, they won't tell me. But they won't say anything either. So I know I've done a bad job. Um, but you know, that's that's who you need feedback from. You need feedback from the guys that've been there, done it, and been to the major tournaments. And, and I'm talking about the old boys club. There, there are plenty of people out there like Mr. Bitter that, you know, aren't necessarily the old boys club who do a fantastic job. So yeah, go and learn from them. No harm in, in learning from people that do it well. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of just like a quick follow up to that, but who do you think of like the newer blood? And I'm getting, I'm gonna say like, like not including like like so DJ Weed's not like older, tasteless is kind of like right in the cusp. But like, who of the new blood do you think is doing like a really really good job? Do you think? Uh, oh, yeah, it depends how you classify them. I suppose. I mean, if you look at people like Mr. Bitter, for instance, who worked his ass off to get you know more popular and do the things he's doing. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's done a great job. Uh, Apollo, I think, probably, because he's probably the last two years, maybe two and a half years, uh, also doing a really good job. He's come a long way, a long way. When you first watch his first cast, you think, actually, his casts are pretty good technically, but presentation-wise, not so good. And he's learned that now. He knows how to use the camera. He knows how to interact with a different host. He knows how to do ins and outs and work with the crowd and stuff like that. And he's, he's become really, really good now. Um, so I'd probably say those two, but I don't think you can ignore people like D-Man either. I mean, D-Man's been around for quite a while, um, but seemingly only in the last year or so has it become apparent to people that the guy has a massive talent. So yeah, nice to see him get a full-time job in esports finally. Uh, really deserves it. Um, yeah, I think that's that's probably the three I would pick out, but there's, there's, there's lots, to be fair. There are some very, very good commentators. So I think we're blessed. I think we're in the age of great casters right now. Which is why I will never do StarCraft 2, by the way. <laughs> yeah, with with if this like I'm trying to get involved myself, and I just like I see this, I'm in, like I'm like, I'm intimidated by. It. I'm like, where do I even fit in here? But um, yeah, I'll work on that. <laughs> but um, okay. Is there another community figure in esports that you respect? Most is not the best way to put it, because there's obviously multiple answers to this. There's like a bunch of people that are really worth of respect. But can you think of a couple big names that are just like that have done a lot for you, or that you think are just doing a really good job, just promoting the industry and have for some time? Uh, it's easy. It's DJ Wee. Yeah, I had guessed yeah. that. Yeah, that's the boring, the boring answer. Um, yeah, he uh, he came to me and Stuart, um, a guy called Tosspot, and 
wanted to start the European side of Inside the Game, and he didn't just take us on into the ITG company. He took us, you know, under his wing, and it sounds a bit odd because I'm actually a bit older than him, but you know, he taught us a lot just by working with him. You, you learn a lot. Um, he works incredibly hard. He puts tons of hours into it that people don't see. Um, he, I think he was the first guy that really kind of made me realize that you you couldn't just do one game. If you want to be a really successful commentator, you had to learn lots of other games. And I took that to heart quite a lot, and I ended up doing some very weird games, very peculiar games. In fact, uh, he would he would say like, you know, Red, do you want to do you want to go to WCG this year? And I'd be like, yeah. And he'd be like, you've got to do Quran 3D. Uh, yeah, okay. I do Quran 3D. Uh, you've got to do Asphalt on a mobile. Uh, okay, I'll do Asphalt. So, you know, I I I respect the hell out of him. He's um, He's had some ups and downs as well. I think he's, his sort of casting career has ebbed and flowed just as mine has. Um, yeah, he's just an all-round all great guy and a great friend. Um, beyond that, I'd probably say probably Mike Burks. Um, he's probably the most influential person I've worked with, a 12-time Emmy Award-winning producer. Uh, my chance to work in, on CGS in, in proper TV and working with him, I just learned ridiculous amounts. I mean, when I look back now, and I'm like, it's it's incredible how much that guy gave, um, and that I learned from him. I mean, I I think between Marcus and him, I probably learned about stories. I, I probably already did it a little bit, but not enough. And then I suddenly realised that actually, um, telling the story is, is what hooks people into the to the show or to the production or to the stream. Um, explaining that you know one guy has gone through hardship to get to where he is, and then he loses, and then he wins, and then what this next round will mean to him and what it will mean to the whole thing and where he goes next and you know filling in the audience about that it's just as important as the actual commentary on the game or the introductions and what have you so um, yeah if I had to cite two people that were really influential on me there were a few others but I think probably Mike Burks and Marcus would be the two okay all right uh, starting to run low on questions so I'm gonna have a couple of couple just closing ones um, so this is obviously your most recent event because it happened like two years ago but um yep. what what events do you think we'll be seeing you at soon and what other like who are you currently like in talks with if you can like talk about that as to what you may be doing <laughs> yeah nice it's try. up and coming it's, yeah nice try actually, but that, that's not how it works yeah. um yeah i don't know honestly i don't know which events i'm going to be doing next um there are like three or four that are up in the air um mm -hmm. something in vegas in november but it's not what you think it is <laughs> uh there's something potentially in China towards the end of November, and it probably is what you think it is. Uh, and there's something in the UK as well, and then maybe one other thing that I'm talking about for next year. So there's a few, there's a bits and pieces sort of floating around, but nothing concrete right now. Right now, I've done my last event. Um, not, not my last event ever, but, but you know. <laughs> that you know, know about. Next. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, don't, <laughs> no Reddit post on, oh my god, retiring! Uh, <laughs> I, so I honestly don't know where, where's next, but I'm sure there'll be something coming along that'll be really cool to go and do. Um, as for the full-time stuff, I don't know. Um, I have a couple of very interesting offers on the table right now, one of which is pretty strong um, for January onwards from next year. It's a firm offer. It's the first truly firm offer I've had. Um, I've had two or three other offers as well. Um, varying in interest level and in terms of um, security, but nothing firm. But I, over the weekend, did have a very firm offer, um, which we're going to talk about more in the week. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what comes out of it. All right, yeah, we'll, I'm, we'll, we'll, definitely to, we'll definitely be aware of that when it when it happens. We'll, we'll keep an eye out. Yeah, I, well, I'm sure people will find anyway. So it's like that anyway, isn't it? Yeah. It's that industry we're in. Mm-hmm. Um, when do you think the next event like this Congress will be held, and would you would you, would you be down to moderate it, moderate it again if given the opportunity? Yeah. Uh, I, I honestly don't know. I'm, you know, I, I, I guess I would be down to, to host it if um, if all the people that that were involved in this panel felt that I would I did the right job and protected the integrity of all of the different panels, which I worked really hard to do. Um, I'd be honoured to do another one. Um, be fantastic to follow up on it but even if I don't get to do it there are still plenty of other people out there that would be equally good I'm sure Day9 could do a great panel uh, I'm sure Marcus could do a great panel 
uh, and there's there's many others. Um, I think JP McDaniel, for, for instance, could could be a fantastic moderator. Um, so I'm not I'm not particularly worried from a personal level if I get to do another one. I'm just I'm honoured to have done one. Um, I think it's more important that we we get another one and we get another one at least within the next 12 months. Uh, Robert Olin at the end of the evening on Friday night um, stood up and made a toast and at the end of that toast he said this is not DreamHack's IP, this is not Twitch's IP, this is eSports IP and therefore they've taken the first step to host one and he invited all of the other big tournaments in the room and in fact anyone in the room that wanted to step forward and host the next one and I'm pretty sure one of them will step up and host another one somewhere uh, and I hope it's as lovely as it was in Valencia and nice and warm if I get to go okay awesome all right um yeah I think I'm pretty much completely out of questions uh the floor is yours if you want to make any shout outs uh or other announcements or if you have anything anything to say about anything uh this is your moment to speak about anything we may have missed Cool. Well, thanks for the interview. Um, thanks to the StarCraft Two community for uh, for taking me in and um, making me feel very welcome. Uh, it's uh, genuinely, uh, you know, a great game, and it's something I've been playing the hell out of for the last few weeks, and uh, only for the last few weeks because I just haven't had any time before that to play. Yeah. Um, but I've genuinely loved getting interested in the game, the players, the teams, the community, the ideas, the memes, the jokes. Um, so I've, I've really enjoyed that so shout out to them guys on Team Liquid Reddit um, but most of all shout out to all the people that made the Valencia Esports Congress possible the Robert Olin and guys at DreamHack and Twitch and the guys at DreamHack Valencia as well and all the panelists that turned up obviously without them it, it wouldn't have been particularly good so uh, yeah thanks for everyone for, for uh, turning up and making it an enjoyable thing and hopefully we'll go forward from here all right, sounds awesome. Thank you very much for this interview, especially on such short notice. I, I was I was kind of surprised how quick it happened. So thank you very much. No, no, no problem at all.